guys. Today we're going to do just something really simple. We're going to show you how to replace the capacitor and everything you need to do before then. So here we go. All right, so obviously I'm gonna be on the side of our building. So at your home, it's going to look a little different when you're looking at your AC unit. But you know, it, it's gonna be the same uh, for what you're gonna be doing. Some of you are going to have a pull-out disconnect or some of you are going to have something that looks like a breaker, kind of like this here. And yours might have something that looks like a little tab and ours is going to have a breaker. What we're gonna do is if you have one of these, you're going to just turn it to off. You can hear our AC unit. <laughs> turning off there. Uh, if you have a pull out disconnect, you're going to have a tab that you're going to pull out. So once we have our disconnect shut off, we can work on our unit so we don't electrocute ourselves. <laughs> so let's get over to the electrical panel. For the most part, many units, you're going to need either a 5 16 nut driver, or a quarter. Uh, I've noticed a lot of reams are quarter inch, but you know, there can be five sixteenths or quarter. So you're going to need those. And then obviously you're going to need your capacitor you just bought. It's going to be wise to have a meter. Again, you don't have to have something uh, as fancy as this. These can usually be over a hundred dollars. Uh, just because of all the things it can do while you're in the field. It's magnetic, it has a clamp, it has a non-contact voltage. You can find some of these at places like Harbor Freight for I think around 40, 50 bucks uh, for the ones that do a lot of what these can. Uh, but it's, it's really good to have one of these just to make sure that you aren't going to get electrocuted or if you need to make sure that you have 24 volts, 240 coming into your unit. Uh, just while you're in there and replacing your capacitor. Okay, the capacitors that you have in your unit, uh, they can look like this. Can size on these dual run capacitors can differ. Uh, they can be tall and skinny like this. They can be short and fat. Um, but a dual run capacitor is going to have three poles on the top of it like this. One is gonna be for your fan motor the Herm is going to be for your compressor and the C is going to be your common where you're going to have a jumper wire that goes back to your contactor uh, to pull power through the capacitor and give that charge to both your fan motor and your compressor. You know, many of you have this the dual run to run both. Now there are a lot of train units I've seen for a while that they do two capacitors. Uh, if you have something like a, a two stage where you have two compressors outside, you would have two of close to this size with only two poles on top of it. And that is just for your compressors. And then you'll have a smaller one in there like this that is just a run capacitor with two poles on top of it. This type of run capacitor usually has a lower number. I've brought an odd one out here. Most people have a five or a 7.5, or I've seen Linux, uh, they do tens. So it depends on the company, but just make sure that you do get that number correct for your fan motor, uh, just replace back what was in there and it will have MFD, it will have UF like this, which is the symbol for microfarad, but just make sure they match. 
Now, if you have one or the other not coming on in your unit, make sure you know if you have two of them, which one is for uh, the part you're buying it. So the one with the smaller number that's out there just by itself is going to solely be for your fan motor. It is a fan capacitor. If you have this and your fan motor is not coming on, this is going to be the one you replace. If nothing is coming on and you just have your dual run capacitor in there, some of you might have a hard start, uh, which we might get to later. If I have one here in the unit, I'll show you. But uh, hard start kits are only going to be for startup on uh, your compressor. So it's only for your compressor. So now that we know what they look like and you need to make sure those numbers match, uh, just on the microfarad side, I have a lot of people ask me that plus or minus 5% and that is just what they say their product should be within range of. So they're saying this one needs to be within 5% of both of these numbers. Now the voltage is important. If your dual run capacitor has a 370 on it, it is okay to use a 440 or a 370. If your capacitor has a 440 on it, you must match the new capacitor uh, to 440. So you can go from down to up, but you cannot put a smaller one on a larger number that makes sense tongue-tied but anyway now that we know what these are for again you might only have a couple of these connected and you'll have a smaller one in there like this for your fan motor or you might have one of these that only have two on top in which that is just for your compressor so if your compressor is not coming on, it could be the culprit that looks similar to this with only two poles on top. Now, an important thing to note here is when you are actually going back behind your unit, a lot of times installers can actually put the unit extremely close to the wall and they're hard to get to. So make sure when you are actually getting around to the unit, we do not step on things like this. This is your refrigerant line and you can step on that and cause a lot of damage to that copper, uh, get a kink in it, cause high pressures, you know, bend or harm the pipe in a way that could restrict the flow so just make sure you don't step on any copper lines like this. All right, so where do we find our electrical panel where our capacitor is? Well, what you're looking for is your bundle of electrical wires that come out. And again, this will be a lot easier for uh, residential because you're not gonna have a whole bunch of these pipes rounding through like this. So you'll only have the one on your unit that's gonna go back to your disconnect box, which I just showed you. So knowing that electrical bundle is coming into this part of the unit, you know that this is gonna be the panel here that we remove. Once you go to pull this off after you've removed your screws, which um, some of these just have a couple, really depends on your service guy and how many you left in there. You can see there's a few here you're going to have to remove. When you go to take the electrical panel off, it's going to be under a lip here. You can see it's going to tuck in like that. You're going to have to pull it down like that. Once we're in our unit here, now this, this unit is pretty old, so <laughs> there's going to be a lot of dust and uh, all kinds of fun stuff here. Now we're going to look and we're going to see, okay, where's our capacitor? Well, as you saw before, here's our capacitor here with the three poles on top and a bunch of wires. So make sure you take a picture of where these wires go before you remove them for obvious reasons, and then you can start removing them. 
Now, this isn't something a lot of technicians do and they should. And in all honesty, I've never had one electrocute me or zap me. Uh, while working at a unit, I have had a few zap me in the office before. But just to be safe, you know, safety first, use a rubberized uh, handle screwdriver and just touch it on the top, metal and metal, you know, that should discharge if your capacitor has, you know, it's still holding a charge. Honestly, most of them within like a couple of seconds, you know, it's, it's done. Now that we've been safe and we've discharged and we know our disconnect has been pulled to cut the high side power, now we can remove our capacitor uh, after we take pictures of the wires here on top so we know where everything goes. All right. Now here we've kind of just sort of looped it in on this. Uh, yours should probably look much neater. But now we know where all the wires are going here. And, you know, this is our relay that's over here on our hard start, which is what I was talking about before. Uh, hard starts are only for your compressor. And it sends, the simplest way to put it is it sends a boost on startup solely for your compressor. It's to ease the load on startup for the compressor. And there's, so, you know, they do call them compressor savers, uh, hard start, uh, that sort of thing. So when you see that in there, that's not your main capacitor for the unit. These are only in play for a couple of seconds just to give that compressor a boost. All right, so once we've removed all of the wires from there, we have our capacitor removed. Now we're going to install our new capacitor. So remember, you know, obviously this isn't super secure. Uh, just make sure yours is secured back in its bracket. You've screwed it in, all that good stuff. We're going to replace wire for wire what you pulled off before. So we're gonna, you know, go ahead and set them on here as they were. So we're gonna go ahead and set them on here as they were. And uh, that'll pretty much be it. So wire for wire. I know where each one of these went because I was smart and I took a picture, right? So Brian, so brown wire from the fan motor, compressor wire, hard start kit, hard start kit. And since it's on the same terminal, I've had people ask me before, does it matter which one they go on? No, it does not as long as it's on the same terminal. So you can put it pretty much anywhere it's going to fit on there. Just make sure it is on the one that it was on before. And there we go. So we're all connected up now. We know where everything goes. We put everything back in the correct spot. Now we're just going to make sure everything's tight and secure in our unit. We're going to put our electrical panel back on and then walk over and turn on our power to the unit and make sure that everything is working great. All right, guys. Well, thanks so much for joining me today. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below and I will get to them as soon as possible. Have a great day and enjoy the rest of your week. Bye, guys.